Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another B&V cooking demo. Wait for people to get checked in. A very cold and snowy day here in Oregon. When you get checked in, be sure and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know you're here, where you're from. Press that like button. That shows me you're here. Today I'm making cornbread waffles. There goes the like button. Hey Jill, good morning. How are you? Good, I hope. Yeah, another round of snow for us last night. There's nine people. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Brenda. You're wet and sloshy. We're not there yet. We're uh, we're snowy right now. <laughs> And I see 10 people on, 15 people on. Good morning, Joe. There goes the like button. Sound is very quiet. You tell me when it's better, okay? Is that better, Brenda? I know it takes a few minutes for the uh, delay, so I'll wait. You tell me when it's good. Morning, Mima. I'm using my uh, lapel mic. That's probably why. No snow here yet. Yeah, we're a little bit higher up too than Portland, Lisa. We're about 500 feet. Is that better, Brenda? Hi, Marilyn. Morning, Shartar, or afternoon, excuse me. Hi, Louisiana. Black bean cro crochet queen. Nice. Welcome. We can get started here any minute. 22 people on. Very good. Sound is fine. Okay. Hi, Washington neighbor. Make sure we got all the cameras set up. We got that one. Yeah, that's just my phone. And we got that one. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Sounds good here, louder now, good. Hi, Debbie. So this is last week's recipe for the vlog. I made them because my wife is now gluten-free. Hi, Patty. Hi, North Carolina. So my wife's gluten-free, and she loves my cornbread, so I, I modified my old recipe, and I guess I should put a link to that. I have a link to the new recipe uh, underneath here, but I don't have a link to the old one. My blog is there. You can find it on the blog. Wow, Ireland. Welcome, Marion. Glad to have you. So I modified the old recipe and made it gluten-free. It was really easy to do, and um, I decided to make waffles because, you know, waffles are fun. Why not? And uh, they came out great. A few people told me they're stuck. And I'm hoping and praying, knock on wood, mine don't stick today. They didn't last time, so we'll see. But it's a very, very simple recipe. I'm going to get everything ready. All my utensils, all my whisks and spoons and stuff. Uh, let's start with that one. So what's cornbread? Obviously you need some cornbread, cornmeal. I have a cup. This is Bob's Red Mill. Get some good quality cornmeal. Don't skimp. 
And this is what I used to replace the flour in the old recipe. This is oat flour. Guys, this is really simple to make yourself. I picked up this coffee grinder. It's a Mr. Coffee coffee grinder. If you can see that. Yeah, it's a Mr. Coffee coffee grinder. It's like 25 bucks. I got it at Walmart or Biomart or something like that. Very cheap. And it does a really good job of making your own oat flour. You just use old fashioned oats and dump it in the coffee grinder and whiz it up and you got oat flour. So you don't have to go out and buy anything special. You can buy oat flour in a store if you want to. You can do it that way. So I got some oat flour, I got some cornmeal. I'm gonna mix this up. I don't think I need my recipe. I'm gonna leave that out. We're gonna mix this until it's really good and combined. I've got some baking powder and some salt right here. Of course, the recipe is below all the amounts and everything you need. We're gonna mix all the dry ingredients first. Now, somebody else asked a question, what if I don't have a waffle iron? I, I think you could probably do this on a George Foreman grill, too, if you happen to have one of those. Any type of waffle iron grill that has the two plates that come down together, I think that would work. You could probably make pancakes out of this, too, in a skillet. So the dry stuff is mixed. Now let's move over to the wet. I've got a cup of milk, plant milk, unsweetened plant milk. Hi, Beth. I'm going to sweeten it up myself with a couple tablespoons of maple syrup. You can use whatever sweetener you like. Agave. I don't do a lot of honey. Of course, honey's not vegan to a lot of people anyway. Date syrup might be good. There we go. And of course, you have to have the little mini whisk for this. And to make this a buttermilk, I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of good old Bragg's apple cider vinegar. You could use lemon juice too. A couple of teaspoons is all. It gives it that buttermilk twang. And of course, I make a mess everywhere. Okay, how are we doing so far? Good? So there's our milk, it's ready to go. Our dry is ready to go. Before we add the wet to the dry, I'm gonna add one of these little things of applesauce. You need a quarter cup. And this is four ounces, about a half a cup. So I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'll use my uh, maple syrup spoon. This replaces the oil in most traditional cornbread recipes. So we need uh, another whisk. Use a big one. We're going to whisk the applesauce in with our cornmeal and our oat flour. Perfect. And we'll mix this up better here in a minute. Get the applesauce out of the way. I'll put it in one of these containers. Sorry for having my back to you. 
I just want to try and keep this as clean as I can. I don't always do a good job of that. There we go. And finally, I'm going to add a little can of these green chilies. I know you've seen these at the store. These are not... It won't focus. These are not that hot at all. They're mild. Very mild. No spice whatsoever. This is for my wife. If it was for me, <laughs> I would use the extra hot ones. All right. We'll dump the green chilies in. And if you don't like green chilies at all, you can leave these out. I think they add a nice bit of flavor to the, to the uh, cornbread. All right, so far so good. Now we mix all this in again. And this time we're gonna add our plant milk mixture, our buttermilk. And we're going to mix this up until we have a really nice, smooth batter. The waffles that stuck were the thicker Belgian style. Okay. There we go. You don't want to overwork it. But you want to make sure you get all of that flour incorporated. And that was perfect right there. So the hard part's done. Now all we got to do... Guys, don't laugh at my uh, waffle iron. It's very, very old. This thing is like 50 years old, maybe. 45 for sure. I think my wife Rhonda said this was a, a wedding present with her first marriage. And we've been married 25 years, so it's, a, it's an oldie. It really is. But I want to get this to heat up. Mine has a orange light on the front of it when that goes out it's heated up and it's set all the way too high yeah it, it's pretty beat up pretty stained well used it's also well seasoned there has been oil in this thing many years ago maybe that's why i got lucky they didn't stick i don't know but while we're waiting, I'll get my timer ready, and uh, we can talk about anything you want. Where's my timer? Oh, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and set this for 10 minutes. I'm not ready yet. There we go. So all the links are down below, uh, I have my blog link down there, the new recipe is there. I'll put the old recipe too in a minute when I'm done. Uh, link to our, com our, our community, we meet every morning for a live stream. We had our first Zoom meeting last Sunday, that was fun, a lot of fun. We're going to do that once a month in our private group. Uh, if you'd like to join, we'd love to have you. Hi Trish Hall! How did your waffles turn out? They stick? Tell me they didn't. Um, it's, it's a dollar a month to join our, our community. It's not that expensive. $10 a year. We do live streams. We have the book club. We have all kinds of things going on. So that link is down there. My newsletter is through Substack. If you're part of my blog, I send you an email every Sunday. I'm also part of uh, Chef AJ's big vegan 
ultimate health bundle this year, 2024. I don't have a whole lot to contribute. I, I have my little ebook, Soup, Stews, and Chilies. It's in there. Um, but there's like 140 contributors to this health uh, bundle. It's like $8,000 worth of products, and the price is like $49 if you're interested. So that link is down below too, and that does help me. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of people in the health bundle this year. Um, Fat Man Rants, Tim Kaufman is there. Del, uh, Chef Del Struff is in there. Of course, <clears throat> Chef AJ, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Herman. Um, I forget who all, a whole bunch of people. So I'm waiting on my waffle iron to heat up. Really, the recipe's done. It's a very fast recipe. All we have to do is wait for it to cook. The, you can see the prep time was really simple. With all my recipes, I want to show people it's not that hard to cook vegan uh, without oil. It's very easy. It can be very simple using the ingredients you probably already have in your pantry. We all have cornmeal probably and rolled oats for oatmeal. So those two ingredients are already there. Baking powder. If you're a baker, you have that. A little bit of salt. The applesauce, you can buy that in any grocery store, the unsweetened kind, unsweetened. Hi, Terry. Trish said they half stuck, but they were good. She got them out. Probably need to get a different waffle maker. Mine is a George Foreman grill with interchangeable plates. If you're not opposed to using oil, I know a lot of people here are, that's fine. I'm going to do it without to show you that it can be done. But if you're not opposed to using it, I'm not here to judge you. I will spray a can of uh, the spray olive oil on your grill. It will definitely keep it from sticking. I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying if you do that already, you won't have any trouble. Somebody asked me in a YouTube comment, um, I love the recipe, why no oil? And I told them, there's really no need for it. I don't miss any kind of olive oil, canola oil, any of that stuff. I don't use it. I don't miss it. Um, it doesn't really add anything to the recipe other than calories. One tablespoon is 120 calories. That's a lot of calories. It's the most calorie dense food we have is oil like 4,000 calories a pound. It's ridiculously high. So if you don't need it, why use it? That's my philosophy anyway. And of course, all of our plant-based doctors, Dr. Majugal, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Grieger, they all say no oil, Dr. Barnard. So yeah. So while this thing's heating up, I do have my window open. It is cold outside. How's your weather down there, Trish? In Cali, we got snow, so it's kind of chilly out. The snow has stopped. But in case this thing gets really smoky, I got a fan in a window to blow, those, blow the, uh, the smoke out. Brenda's going to definitely try it in her Cuisinart with interchangeable plates. Yes, oil is also inflammatory. So it's not very good for those arteries either. Another reason to, to give it up. Definitely. So I'm going to use a ladle when this is ready. I think the key trick with this waffle iron, when you cook them, don't peak. Once you put the lid down, and start cooking them, set your timer. I did 10 minutes in this old thing and that was perfect. Don't peek. If you raise the lid and they're sticking, you're probably gonna panic and you don't wanna do that. Leave the lid down, let them cook. If you do raise the lid after 10 minutes and they seem to be sticking a little bit, let them cook a little longer. 
So Trish says down there in Cali, they got rain. Some good rain last night. Whitely raining today. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of snow yesterday morning, this morning, probably tomorrow morning coming, and Monday morning, I think it's on the forecast. So what do you do with this cornbread? Uh, you serve it with my chili. You serve it with your favorite soup. You, you can do what I did in the blog picture. I just drizzled a little red chili sauce on top, threw on some cilantro and green onions, and ate it like that. It was really, really good. But cornbread to me is beans or soup. Soup, beans, and cornbread. And uh, I, like I said, I did the wa uh, waffles because they're fun. And a lot of people have an old waffle maker and probably don't even use it anymore. So here's another chance to use something that you might have thought you'd have to throw away. Okay, I hear it clicking and chirping over here. Do I have a plate to put them on? That's a good idea. Let's grab a plate. All my stuff in here. All right. Now we have a plate. Raining in Delaware. Weird March. Very weird winter. Hi, Lorna. In Cali, they have snow. I do live in northeastern California near the Reno, Nevada. Within a few hours. Nice. So welcome California and Delaware and all of the places you guys are from. I know we got Iowa here and Washington State and more California. I'm just going up the list of people I recognize and uh, more Washington, Ireland. I think you won the uh, farthest award. North Carolina. Eva said, the sound is good here, louder now, good, good, good. So I'm still waiting on this thing to heat up. It takes a while. March 2nd in eight days, if you live near the uh, Portland, Vancouver area, I'm going to be doing a talk for Northwest Veg. That's the nonprofit that does various potlucks throughout the area. They also do our uh, veg fest every year, even though we haven't, uh, we haven't had one since COVID, but they're the organization that does that. They invited me to speak in a Renko White Off. Uh, so I'll be there March 10th. If you're interested, 5 to 7 p.m. There's a link in my community group. Um, I can also send you a link if you, if you want. It's free to attend. And uh, I'll be talking about chilies, chili peppers, and the health benefits. Because I like spicy. Okay, the light's out, so we're going to do this. There goes the smoke. Smooth, even, ladlefuls. Just like that. Another one. So you can see I make four waffles at a time. These are about four inches square. I'm going to close the lid. I'm going to set my timer. Ten minutes. No, not fifteen minutes. Yes. Technology. Ten minutes. There we go. Just let them cook. And this, when I made these last weekend, this batch made two sets of waffles. So at four waffles each, it made eight 
cornbread waffles. I thought of that, Lisa. Helps to plug in the waffle iron before you start mixing. I want to keep the heat and the smoke from this old thing as minimum as possible. I don't trust it. It's just too old. That's why I got the fan over there. I got a fire extinguisher here. God forbid. I need it. So Lorna is talking to Trish on the edge of a, a blizzard. Oh my. Snowed in, roads are all changed, required, travel not advised. Isn't that crazy for March, guys? In California, of all places. I would expect that maybe in Michigan or Minnesota, Wisconsin, maybe Chicago. But California? So yeah, this thing's smoking like crazy. That's what it does. You can probably see, yeah, you can see it. I might turn on the fan here in a minute. Just to keep the smoke down. I put on low. Good morning there, LM, afternoon. Welcome to the live stream. <clears throat> Any questions for me? We can do a QA and a while we're waiting on these things to cook. Anything you want to ask me, and I'll answer if I can. Hi, Tally. <clears throat> It's about 50 now. We have no snow this winter. Wow. And you're near Chicago, right, Tally? <laughs> 70 is cold to you, Trish. Really? Come on. I remember flying home to Indiana one year from when I was living in Dallas. Maybe it was Albuquerque. I think I was in Dallas. I was still single. And uh, the temperature of one Christmas when I landed was 32 below in Indy. Lorna said, February used to be high snow levels in my area years ago, much less now. Calving season always starts in the snow. Ranching community here. Regan goes over. <laughs> I bet it does, Lorna. Yeah. Brenda said, it's crazy here on the Canadian West Coast. The little skiff of snow we had is melting. The sun's shining. They're only 100 feet above sea level, though. All right, we're about halfway through with these waffles. So again, I would take these waffles when you make them. I would uh, cut them up into individual waffles and, and use them as cornbread for my soups and chilies. That's what I would do. But if you guys want to get creative and make some kind of a cornbread waffle sandwich of some kind or something like that, share me the recipe. I'd be glad to post it. So no more questions for me? Anything you want to know about me? I'm 
thinking of buying one of those chef's jackets. What do you think? Should I? You don't need to be a, a culinary school graduate to be a chef. I have a couple of friends who are chefs by label, but they have not gone to school. I could get one with the buttons on the sides and the little B&V logo. Beth, what I heard is you have to be eating gluten at the time that you get tested for celiac for it to show positive, if you actually have it. And that's what I've been told. I don't know. Rhonda was tested too, my wife, and she is a negative. Yeah, there's a lot of people here, Beth, that are gluten sensitive. Talk to Jill, talk to Trish, talk to Trish's mother, who's doing very well on a whole food plant-based diet at... How old is your mom, Trish? 90 what? I haven't met Trish or her mom, but I've seen that we've talked a lot and I've seen lots of pictures of them together and she is, she's something. Still driving. Still doing yoga. Reverse all kinds of problems. Yeah, there's quite a few people, both in this YouTube community and my Facebook community, um, and the private community that are all gluten sensitive. My wife, when she starts eating gluten, her blood pressure goes crazy. Trisha's mom will be 93 in July. Ah, it's amazing. Okay, two minutes left. So, you see, I'm not peeking. I'm not opening the lid. Beth, my wife has been eating a brand of bread, gluten-free bread. It's not very good, but it's like S... I forget how to spell it. S-C-H-U-F. Maybe you've seen this in the store. Um... It doesn't have oil, so she can eat that, or eggs, or anything like that. A lot of gluten-free products have eggs in them, for some reason. I see 24 likes, and we've got 31 people online. So, guys, give me that like, and subscribe if you want to. That would help me out a lot. It lets YouTube know that you guys like this material, and it shares it with more people. So, the more you hit that like and subscribe, more people see it. All right, one minute. I'm going to cook up, uh, cook up the other batch, but we don't have to wait for the other batch to cook. Thank you, Trish Hall. Yes, that's it. S-C-H-A-R. That's a brand my wife buys. They have um, sourdough. They have uh, uh, like a 10, 15 seed bread. They have uh, multi-grain bread. It's very expensive. It's very small loaf and they're very small pieces of bread for what you get. That's the sad part. You know, I, the bread is no bigger than one of these waffles and it's like $8 a loaf where I am at anyway. Okay, I'm going to switch the camera angle. Moment of truth coming up. I'm going to get a plate here ready. Five, four, three, two, one. And... That's very hot.
Is it going to make a fool out of me? There we go. Here's my fork. I should have got a spatula. But you can see mine lifts right out. Look at that. No stickage at all. I'm going to go ahead and get these other ones going. My phone timer is making all kinds of music noise. So yeah, you can see this was empty and it made two batches of waffles. I'm going to close the lid. Start my timer over again, 10 minutes. Uh, okay. Trish Hall, as far as the char bread, it's not a great one, but often the only one available. Uh, she buys sourdough from a bakery in Southern Cal. LM said, Chuck, I say no to the chef coat. I think more people will relate to you in your t-shirts and jeans. It says the average person can cook <clears throat> and make great meals. Just my personal opinion. And Lisa agrees. Okay. That's a thought. I'm open to that. I thought it'd be cool. It's definitely not something I have to do. I'm going to slide this over so you can see these waffles. And do I have a knife? Oh, of course not. How about in here? I have a knife in here? Of course not. But they, how hot are they? Yeah. They tear apart pretty easy. Let's take a bite. Mm. Those are good. They really are. Trish agrees with a no chef coat. Am I using the ladle from the Instapot? I don't know where this ladle came from. I've had it forever. It's a little tiny one. Is that an Instapot ladle? Ladle? I don't know. But that's the one I use. My timers are going, yeah. Yum. I know what I'm having for breakfast. Yeah, they're crunchy. You can hear the crunch. I'll tear it off. <laughs> okay, lots of people are agreeing with the uh, no chef boat. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your comments. I really do. Okay, I guess that is an Instapot ladle. I had no idea. I just knew it was in my drawer. Where it came from, I have no idea. So, proof. They can come out non-stick. I have a rice paddle with my rice maker. Yeah. And if I try to open this right now with six minutes left, it would be stuck and it'd be like glue in between. That's why I say 
Weaver went close. Now, I just thought of something. And we have time. We'll find out what I should have done after I took these off is close the lid and let it heat back up. Because you, the white is orange right now and it should be off. These will stick, I bet you. Not only do you have to not peek and don't open the lid, when you take your first batch out, you do have to close the lid, let it reheat back up, the white goes off, and then you put in your next batch. I didn't do that. So I think they'll be okay, but I bet you they'll stick. And we'll find out in uh, five minutes. I still will only see 27 likes, guys. Well, there's 27 people online. Okay, that's fair. Um, cookbook. Cookbook sales have slowed down way, uh, quite a bit, way down. But they're still available. Links down below if you need a cookbook. You haven't got one yet. This recipe is not in the cookbook. But the original cornbread recipe is. Oh, that's way too close. That's better. There you go. If you haven't seen it. So we're down to like 60 something books left. But yeah, this cornbread, the original cornbread recipe is in the book. And all you have to do is substitute the flour with uh, oat flour. Otherwise, it's the exact same recipe. And it's in the bread section. It's on page nine. Simple vegan cornbread. One cup of unsweetened almond milk. Two, teaspoon, uh, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. Two tablespoons of maple syrup. Quarter cup of applesauce. One cup of cornmeal. It says one cup of flour, all purpose or bread flour. So you can substitute the uh, oat flour for that. Yeah, a little bit of salt, and that's it. It says oven 350. And I always use a cast iron skillet when I make the old fashioned cornbread. But you can use whatever, whatever uh, pan you have. In this case, I'm using a waffle maker. Leave the cornbread in a few more minutes to compensate the heat. Yeah, I will. It'll, it'll take a little bit longer. For those of you who have been following uh, my wife Rhonda's blood pressure story, um, she's doing very well. She's eating a very strict diet. Completely whole food, plant-based, no oil, um, very little coffee, no alcohol, no gluten anymore, gluten-free. And uh, she's cut out the onions and the garlic because it upsets her, tem her tummy. But she's doing very well. Her blood pressure is consistently, she's still on her meds, but it's, now it's consistently 120s over 80s, which is good. We had an appointment, um, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, with a sleep apnea doctor, finally after a year. And they're going to send us a home test kit for sleep apnea. That'll be three or four months from now. Just to see if she has sleep apnea, and that could be a, con a contributing factor to her blood pressure problems. I don't think she has it. and The doctor didn't seem to think she had it either. We were supposed to go for a renal exam, a kidney doctor, yesterday, but we had snow, so we canceled. But that's what's going on with Rhonda and me. Uh, I kind of got a surprise last night. I checked my blood pressure. I don't check it that often anymore. But I checked it last night, and I had uh, 
Yeah, here we go. Open says me. There we go. Yeah, I'll take that. I was at 820 last night. I'll take that any day of the week. It's not always that low. But when it is, I celebrate. Yahoo. All right, get the picture off of there. All right, Jish, we'll see you later. Yum, lime juice everywhere. All right, where are we at, guys? Um, what happened to my, uh, there we go, 19, 18, 17. Are these going to stick? I think they are. Yep, they're sticking. I figured. So. Alright, be quiet. Um, I'm going to let these go another five minutes. Not 10 minutes, five minutes. Why can't you do? There's five minutes. Um, I should have waited when I pulled these off, put the lid down with the iron reheat so the white goes off. That's the, that's the key to not sticking. And I wrote that in the blog post. It is in the blog post. So there's that warning there. I just forgot to do it here. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I was surprised. Um, it, it's just, it, it's unnecessary vapor. <laughs> Whether it's smoke or steam, it, it, it's hot and it smells. And this is a little tiny office, so I need to have the ventilation for sure. There's four minutes. Anything else, guys? I am going to finish this last batch up and clean up my mess. My day today is working on my chili presentation for Northwest Veg. And a, blog, uh, a new blog post. I may take an older recipe and redo the pictures and such for uh, tonight's blog post. I'll come out tomorrow morning. So be on the lookout for that. Again, there's a ton of links down below underneath all this stuff. If you want to support me in any way, it's always appreciated. I'm just waiting for this other batch. There they go. So all I did was just wait a few extra minutes. They're kind of soft. Here's my fork. That's kind of hard in the middle. So they were sticking, but if you just put the lid down and let them sit a little bit longer, they come right out. Okay, I'm going to unplug this thing. And here's batch number two. Hot and steamy right out of the oven. <laughs> right out of the waffle iron. Thank you all for coming. Make some waffle uh, cornbread waffles. And then make some chili or soup. They go great together. And yeah, they are crunchy. So here's my... Mm. They're so good.
because LM, Rhonda is gluten free now. My wife. She's gluten free, and a lot of other people are gluten free. So it's nice to have a gluten free option for those people. That's why I used oat flour instead of normal flour. They taste just as good. They really do. If you like my cornbread, you won't notice a difference in taste at all. They give me ma. Yeah, exactly, Jill, to make them gluten free. I'm going to eat these. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Appreciate you being here. I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. If you live out here on my side of the country, be careful. It's snowy, cold, nasty. And, uh, yeah, we'll do this again. Let's see what's coming up. Anything coming up other than the chili presentation? Oh, in my private group, the uh, support group, on Tuesdays, our live stream, we're going to do a single topic timer. So this Tuesday, the topic in my morning live stream will be all about soy curls. Where do you buy them? What are they? What do you do with them? How do you prep them? Uh, what kind of recipes can you make with them? That kind of thing. The whole 45 minutes will be nothing but soy curls. So if you'd like to join our group, again, another reason to. Uh, come on over. Link down below. It's only a dollar a month. And Tuesday, we'll have Topic Tuesday, which is all about soy curls. I'll see you guys there. I'll see my, my, my group Monday morning for the live stream. The rest of you, I'll see you next Saturday. Do you have any air fryer recipes I do on my blog. There's a whole section window for air fryer recipes. Yes. Thank you all. I'll see you next week. Take care of yourself. Thanks for coming. See ya.